Hello everybody, and welcome to another edition of Cooking with Wookie. Uh, today we're going to make a variation of uh, my wife's family recipe of cabbage rolls, and then I'm going to do my usual magic with it. Um, she doesn't like to do, put through, she doesn't like to put out the work for cabbage rolls, and I can't blame her. Rolling up stuff in a cabbage, in a cabbage leaf is a pain in the butt. So, she has figured out for us how to do it in a casserole style. And I'm going to show you how to do that right now. So, we have a shed pan. Alright. We're, we're going to put some oil in that first. And turn your oven on to about 375. Uh, excuse me. And the very first thing I do is wash my hands. Why? Because, well, sanitary, and I have to get the dishwater started anyway, because if your house is like my house, dishes never stop coming. They're like bills and taxes. So let's start with the dish hole, as I like to call it. Now, I wash my hands in dish soap. I happen to use Dawn because, you know, we go through so much of it that... And most, most dish soaps will get the grease and grime and all that off your hands, plus sanitize them and all that. It's kind of an old secret from, from the old, back in the old restaurant days. Long before the, the health department decided uh, decided to stick their nose in it. So anyway, uh, wash, sanitize hands. I turn the. Uh, you hit the floor, so I gotta wash it. Anyway, I turn the kitchen light off uh, so you can see me, so I'm not backlit. Because once I turn the kitchen lights on, the lighting here just goes funky. Um, so, anyway, I've turned the oven on to 375. You can do 350 if you want. You know, it depends on how long you want to want to bake your casserole for. All right. And then, we're going to put... I'm going to turn the, the kitchen light on so we can see in the pan. I'll put, I'm going to put some oil in there because we're going to have to do some frying first. Now this is an old, most, most housewives will know this secret, um, and some of you old timers will know this one too. If you're like me and have to wash dishes by hand, you generally try to use the same pan for everything. Now I put a little bit of oil in here, um, not because I want to put oil in my, in my hamburger at the moment. But I put oil in the pan to keep things from sticking. And that's the main reason for, for using any oil at all. You know, because your hamburgers, your meats, generally will have their own uh, fats and oils and stuff. But, and then what I'm doing here with the oil is I'm just running it around the uh, sidewalls of the pan, the base of the pan, trying to get a good coat. Especially with the uh, rivet heads. The rivet heads are the worst for your handles. Because there's no non-stick on a rivet head. So if you don't get them covered. Um, you know, they're, your food's going to stick there. And I'm trying to get the uh, oil high enough to cover everything. Because we're going to do a big dish today, as usual. <clears throat> Since, you know. I can't cook small. I was never taught how to cook small. 
All right, so your pants should look similar to this. In the fact that, um, in the fact that you can see the grease and oil, you know, it doesn't have to be a perfect straight line or anything, just, just enough to cover it. And then we have our ingredients here. All right, um, we have tomato paste, um, which is what her mom uses for the cabbage rolls. Um, wife uses uh, cubed or chopped tomatoes in a can, and I couldn't get a hold of her to deal with that or to ask her the questions. Um, you want a fast cooking rice, instant rice. Um, I usually use minute rice, but the King Supers was out, so we got the Kroger brand. Um, she mixes beef and turkey. You can just use solid beef or solid turkey, whatever, whatever fanciness you have. And then I'm gonna, we got one onion. We got the usual spices here. Um, let me pull them out. So we got the... I'm going to use garlic, basil, and oregano, and probably some turmeric. Now I use turmeric, I use, tend to use turmeric because of its medicinal purposes. The flavor is pretty good, but you have to be careful that it doesn't overwhelm your dish. Alright, so let's see if I can find a place to put the camera, and then we'll start chopping. Alright. I don't have a professional setup, so please forgive me if things are a little bit strange. And, you know, this isn't a professional cooking show. This is just for everybody who's new to cooking because they got stuck at home because of COVID or they want to learn cooking. Um, to my gluten-free friends, there is no gluten in here. And there is no dairy. None of that, okay? Um, if you have a tomato allergy or an onion allergy, yes, they, we have those, but uh, it's a simple, really filling recipe that um, anybody can do. So we have our onions, onion here. I chop off, chop off the ends, and I know some of you probably are like, yeah, we know how to chop an onion. Well, some of you do, some of you may not. So, chop off the ends. Now, what I do with this is I do, I cut it this way. All right, and I do that because I'm going to take that first layer. See here the. Uh, see if I can shade it a little bit. But um, on the onions. I don't know if you can see or not. I might have to move this for a second. So let's move it over here so you can see a little better. That's better. Okay, so the onions have rings like trees. Okay, so you want to take this first layer that's right next to all of this uh, brown crispy outside. And all we're going to do is take it and peel it. Okay, take it and peel it. It'll take all of this brown crispy stuff with it as you peel it all the way around. Okay, so you should have an onion that looks like this. Should look about like that. Yeah, there's going to be a little bit of stuff that you have to clean because I've never seen an onion come off whole that's been worth anything. All right, so nice, beautiful, clean onion that you can chop. Okay, back over here to the cutting board. Any debris that's left over on your cutting board, you can uh, get rid of that. Okay, now I take the line that I've, I've got cut in there. I don't know if you can see it because of the sunlight coming in. I'll close this door. I like having the extra light, but it's messing with the camera. So, anyway, so you take, see so you got your line that you used, you chopped it into in there. You're gonna take that line and you're gonna finish cutting it. 
Now I'd recommend putting the flats down. Okay, either end is fine, doesn't matter. Now you cut that in half, just like that. So you have half onions. This one, of course, is old enough that it's starting to grow. The leaves and stuff in there won't hurt you. Okay, so you can you can use them if you're really uh, retentive about it. You know, they just pull out. But the onions is trying to grow, and that's all that is. Okay. So I'm going to pull these out just so that, or try to. Sometimes you can, sometimes you can't. And then what I do is this. Now this is not, this is not how a professional chef would do it because he would, you know, do the whole finger thing and bam, 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 bam. I've never learned how to do that. But what I do is I take, and I'm careful because if you have a sharp knife, you know if you slip once, you're going to lose a digit. So be careful. Hold on to your onion like this and slice straight down. Now keep a hold of it because when you pull it up, if, if it sticks to your blade, it's going to pull that, that onion with it. Okay? And you just want to go slow, space it out. Because you're making, you're gonna make onion cubes. Okay, see, see what happened? So I said, hold on to it tight. And I think we can get maybe one more. If you're a little scared, that's fine. Fear is good when it comes to knives. All right, you don't want to be, you want to respect them without being afraid of them. Okay. If you respect them, you'll be careful so that your fingers don't get cut. I was cut as a kid uh, with a butcher knife. Friend, friend of a good friend of mine and I had a little fight over who was going to poke holes in a belt, and we had a butcher knife going. And you can see at the base of my first two fingers here, you can see the scar both of them all right so I learned at an early age to respect blades all right now for this one so you got you got it cross cut I turn it start at either end hold on to it now this to do it professionally pull your fingers your your fingers in so the first digits here your first knuckles will pull in like this. What you want is a solid surface like, about like that. All right, that's what you want. And that's what you're gonna hold that with. You're supposed to slide your knife up and down your knuckles to uh, cut the onion. All right, so we go slow. There's no, this is an iron chef. You're not gonna go very fast. Make sure you get all of the onions and debris out of the way as you're chopping down. Okay, just like that. And you're gonna have a little bit of leftover. If you do it wrong, or if you weren't paying attention too much, you're gonna get the bigger chunks, which you can chop down by hand. I generally tend to leave them for extra flavor and texture and things like that. All right. So you're going to take your first batch of onion. Okay, there's my pot. So you're going to take your first bit of onion, take your knife, scrape your cutting board. So you have a nice cutting board. If there's any debris, like that. And then do your other half of your onion. Okay. It shouldn't take long. Uh, it's taking me a while because I'm instructing. Just remember to be careful when you're cutting down that you don't slip. You need a sharp knife so you don't have to use a lot of force. If you have to use a lot of force with your knife, sharpen it. Okay, I'm not using a whole lot of force at all. So, keep your knife sharp. A dull knife will get you injured. Why? Because you have to push, put a lot of force behind it 
and then when you get through the product that you're cutting, you're going to slam down on that or it's going to twist. And when it does that, it's going to catch your fingers. Okay? So. Okay. Just like that. And then we're going to put this in. I'm going to turn the fire on at medium so I can start sauteing those onions. And then um, we'll start opening up the beef and stuff. That's all I needed the cutting board for. So I usually just rinse, rinse it off and go. Because it's a nice quick way to clean your cutting board. The onion juice is not going to kill anything. If you feel like washing it, you can. I wash my, I usually end up washing my cutting board several times a week, so I'm not overly worried about it. Um, and I know for some of you professional chefs, that's a big no-no. I know that. I know the, the kitchen rules for professional kitchens, but, you know, when you're at home, you can, you're a little more relaxed on it. Now, we have the burgers that we're going to have to fry. So what I'm trying to do is saute up the onions first a little bit. We'll put the burger in and cook it off. That way you can cook it off, get the juice out of it, add your uh, seasonings to it, and then we're going to put everything else together. Now, the other ingredient that I didn't get for you guys, or didn't show you, uh, was the great big jars of, of uh, sauerkraut. You know, we like sauerkraut, so here's your sauerkraut. Vlasic, I always go with Vlasic because they're a good brand. In all my years, they've never failed. And the only time I didn't use, we didn't use Vlasic was when mom made her own. And I wish I knew how she did it. <laughs> because, oh my God, it was good. Especially for you sweet tooths out there. Mom didn't make the sauerkraut in the traditional sour way. She made a sweeter kraut. And oh my God, that was good. So, you know, when you bit into it, it wasn't like, oh. It was, you know, a sweeter, enjoyable one. Now, my wife likes sour, so sour. Because, you know, you know, all of us husbands know how that works. What the wife wants, the wife can. Um, so I'm just going to unwrap everything and get it ready for... be thrown in there. Like I said, she likes a, a turkey meat combo. Now, if you wanted to make this dish and make it more higher in protein, you can. And all you have to do is simply add more beef. It really is that simple. Um, there's not, there's not a whole lot for carbs at all in this dish. So I believe it should be keto friendly. From what I've from what I've read on that anyway, it should be fairly keto friendly, um, and it's a very quick dish. The you know cooking up the meat, so, uh, sautéing the onions, cooking up the meat, and um, all of that is what's time consuming. So. Like I said, I'm white. Now it's just a game of weight. So, as you can hear, and I'll show you. Uh, let's get you up above the cooking area so you can see what's going on. Let's see if I can do this right. There we go. So, here's your onions, okay, sauteing in, in the oil. 
And you don't, you don't really need to, if you want to brown them, don't get me wrong, I love brown onions too. I like them fried to, to the brown point. But all you're trying to do is soften them up. Rubber spatulas are your friends. Um, soften up the onions, break them up a little bit for those. And then once, once they get grease all over them, then they're not gonna stick together again, okay? I love the aroma of frying onions. All right. Um, yeah. <laughs> That's pretty much it for the moment. Um, I mean, all, all we're doing is basically watching onions fry. Um, so... I'm going to go ahead and stop the, stop the video. When I come back, I'm going to have the onions done. I'm going to have the meat done. Then we're going to season everything and put it all together so we can put it in the oven. Okay? That way you guys are not bored to tears. Watching onions fry, grass grow, paint dry, you know, the usual stuff. Be right back. All right. Now, all right, now we're back in action again. Uh, and I'm going to put you guys up here. As you can see, we're done. Now, I, my wife bought me one of these little tools here. And these, the, this is one of the greatest things I've ever seen. You know, for, because I used to have to break up, we used to have to break up the meat with a spoon. And this is the easiest way to break all this meat up so that it's nice and not so lumpy especially if you're doing stuff like a like a meat spaghetti sauce or things, something like that uh, tacos you know you can go ahead and do all of that Um, you have to watch out sometimes because food tends to stick in the cracks. So that's why I bang it so much on everything. Oh, oh excuse me. Bad blooper. Okay. So I've got my... Ah. I have my colander out. We're gonna need it um, to strain the sauerkraut. And because if you if you don't strain your sauerkraut, you're going to get a mess and very sour. If you like really, really and sour, by all means, don't strain your sauerkraut. However, I'm not that much of a sour fan. Quite the opposite, actually. There we go. Okay. I'm going to strain the meat. And yes, I've learned how to do it with a lid. And the way to do that is to keep your lid cracked. I usually, I'm usually using cloth. I don't generally use pot holders. I've always used cloth because of the restaurants. So keep it cracked and try and hold on to it this one's being particular drain your oil and your grease and stuff out of your um, fan Okay. 
Put a little hot water down behind it so it doesn't clog your sink. Alright. Now that we have all of this, fun goodness. Okay. I'm going to put your seasonings you can do um, for yourself. You can season it however you want. I generally put a generous portion in of garlic in. Okay. Um, probably about what two tablespoons or so ish one to two somewhere in there because i love me some garlic keeps all the vamps away all right and then we've got our oregano and basil now the oregano and basil combo i like to do um roughly one teaspoon of basil Okay. and then two teaspoons of oregano uh, you want twice as much oregano as you do basil as a rule of thumb okay uh, one two okay I use a little bit of pepper, just a few little sprinkles, and a little bit of uh, Himalayan sea salt, the pink stuff. Um, because of the mineral content is really the main reason I use it. You want mi the minerals for your body to process and and help get things going for you um, a lot of our foods nowadays don't have the mineral content the vitamin content because of over farming and you know GMO and all of that stuff I'm not a big GMO fan I think we have the brains to do something different it's just that, you know, doing something for the people that helps the people generally doesn't um, coexist with making profit. You have to, and that's, I think, the main reason why we don't have stuff like food replicators and things like that is because profitability. Okay, now I've opened the can of tomato sauce. Or the tomato, uh, this is tomato puree. So we're gonna put that in. Your spatula will help you get as much out as you possibly can so that you don't waste product. Uh, be careful when you're playing with the lids. These lids here are sharp, and they will get you. I've been bitten a few times by them damn things, or them things, and it just sucks. Bleeding into your food is not something you really want to do. Um, now, on the, another subject, completely opposite of what we're doing here, there is somebody that decided to direct message my wife and comment about how her lip sync is fake. It's not fake. I'll tell you this right now. Has never been fake. Okay. And then I'm going to put another can of water in um, for the rice that we're going to put on top of this. Now I want to mix all of this first before I put the rice on top. Anyway, as far as the limp lip sync thing that she does, she's done that since we met. We've been together, this is year seven, and she's done it every day, several hours a day since we've met. And she does it for fun for herself. She puts out the videos just for you guys to enjoy. 
and um, the comments like that are not ne needed, not necessary. You know, threatening to throw a strike against our channel because it's fake. Come on. That's a whole lot of childish. So, to the person that did that, if you don't like it, you don't have to watch it. Okay? It's really that simple. We're still a free country, after all. At least for the moment. So, if you don't like it, you think it's fake, great. You don't have to watch it. See you later, bye. Alright, back to this. Now, I've mixed, you saw I mixed all the ingredients up in that. Um, and while that's happening, I'm going to open the open the uh, sauerkraut and start it draining. Uh, uh, yeah. If I can, my little chicken wings of arms are just not doing me any favors right now. Makes me feel weak as a kitten. Oh, holy crap. That is ridiculous. Drain that. I'm going to put a little bit of water in there and help it out a little bit. Let it drain. Oh, look, we got some boiling going on here. How about that? Yay! Boilage. All right. Um. So now that we got all that going, we are going to throw our rice on top of it, everything. Mm, so it was two cups to about a cup of rice. About like that. Or so. Okay. Mix it all in. It's, it can soak up all of the tomatoey goodness. Okay. So as you can see, uh, there's absolutely no gluten. There's no casein. There's no should be no allergies, with the exception of I know some people are allergic to onions, and that's fine. You can skip those. And some people are allergic to tomatoes. And that's fine too. If you're allergic to tomatoes, um, what I would recommend is either like a green chili sauce. You could do that a little Mexican style. Um, let's see. You could also, if you wanted it a little sweeter, you could use... I know they have uh, pumpkin, there's a brand that does a pumpkin based spaghetti sauce that's uh, free of tomatoes and it's gluten free. Okay, so now we got this going. And I just, I'm, I keep mixing it because 
If anybody knows anything about rice, they'll know that it'll stick just as fast as it can. If you let it, it will stick. I don't put I don't put rice in my chili. I put rice I put the chili over the rice in the bowl when I serve it. And that's because the of the rice sticking to the bottom of the pan and burning and you know, it just it makes the food rice is a great superfood. Don't get me wrong there. But from a cook's point of view, Anything that sticks to the bottom of the pan and burns is not good for your um, dish. Okay. And I think I've got enough water in there for it. I'm going to turn this off. And then you're going to take your rice, make sure it is thoroughly drained. Your rice. The bad blooper. You take your sauerkraut. Okay, and just you can see I'm just putting it over the top. Now th all this is is the topping. You need enough sauerkraut to go over the the entire to entirety of the top. And the reason I said that is this: the sauerkraut is there to seal it up. Nice, even, nice and even, even Steven. But the rice is there to seal it, seal up the tomatoes and beef and all of that. Make sure that the rice doesn't, or uh, the rice stays nice and all of that. We got some sauerkraut that doesn't want to do what I want it to. Okay. There we go, kind of like that. Make sure it's nice and even. I pat it down, make sure it's nice and even so it bakes evenly. And we're going to bake this for about 30 minutes. Okay. Now, if you want more, if you want more seasoning, by all means, put more seasoning in. This is just a generic. I'm just doing this as a generic recipe. You know, some of us like more seasoning, some of us like less. Some of us don't know what seasoning is and just use salt and pepper. That's fine too. Okay, so it looks like this. We're gonna put it in the oven. Ooh, that's a little warm. We're going to put it in the oven and bake it for about 30 minutes. Okay. Once that's done, I will uh, serve it up and show you guys. I keep dropping shit. I keep dropping things on the floor. So once that's done, we will serve it up and I'll show you what that looks like. Okay. And there we go. backlit by the light all right let's do that there we go okay so now that it's in the oven we'll see you guys now okay everybody i'm back sorry about the blurriness but trying to get the computer to behave here and ps this is what it looks like in the uh, bowl okay there you guys go. Enjoy.